here she is. She doesn't like to be held exactly, but you know, you guys seem to enjoy her last time. She's actually very quiet, which is odd. Her name is Munchkin. Yeah, yeah. okay, you can go now. And welcome to Craft Quest. I'm My Lady Sprout, or Gabby, and we're doing another one from my home. We are all still under quarantine, so this is where we'll be doing it. It's a little bit different from where we were before. I've spruced things up, made things a little bit nicer, so hopefully this will work out. Since everyone's at home, or should be at least, then we're gonna be making something that is very comforting and nice to have when you're at home. We're gonna be making a pillow. I'm gonna be making a Pantheon pillow today, specifically a Japanese Pantheon pillow. I chose to do Japanese Pantheon because it is a simple icon, well, simpler than the other icons for Pantheons. Also, I just happen to have red fabric, so I gotta work with what I've got. But you can do any other icons in Smite or Paladins, you know, as long as you think it's a fun icon and you want to, you feel it represents you or represents the things you like, put it on a pillow. So, what you're gonna need for this is a sewing machine or just some like needle and thread, whichever one you wanna do or whichever one you have. Um, you're gonna want some pins. Um, you don't really need to have a printout, but I figured I might as well. You can always, you know, just sketch it and do, do it that way. You also need some fabric. I'm only gonna be using two colors, the red for the the Pantheon logo and then a white for the rest of the pillow. You may want to do a different color for the pillow. This will probably get dirty quickly, so you can already see it. Look at this. It's already got this, the red fuzzies all over it because this fabric is very fuzzy. Both of these fabrics, very, very comfy. This is like a fleece and this is something soft. <laughs> but you can always use whatever fabric you have on hand. If you have a t-shirt hanging around that you don't want anymore, you don't use anymore, or you happen to just have some scrap fabric, then go for that. Also, I have polyfill here. Polyfill is just some polyester fill that people usually use to fill pillows. Um, I'm going to be mixing this with some scrap fabric, mainly because I have nothing else to use the scrap fabric for at the moment, and I like to cut it up into small pieces and put it into a pillow. You can choose to do all scrap fabric if that's what you have and you don't have this, um, but I like to mix it. It adds a, a good amount of comfy to the pillow. Um, or you can have even like take an old pillow that you have that you don't like and take the stuffing from that and put it into this one since you'll, uh, you'll hopefully like this. Or you can just make the outside of the pillow and wrap your old pillow with the fabric that we're doing here. You've got lots of options. So let's just get on into it then. So what I'm gonna be doing first is I'm gonna be folding out the white fabric we have here and seeing what a good size for the base of the pillow will be. So, whoop, taking this along with me. And if I put the printout or whatever drawing you have on here, then I do want the pillow to be a square versus a rectangle, but you can you can do how you can even do a circle if you want, but I'm gonna be doing a square. And I feel like it would be good to do the, these outside edges right here, basically do it the width of the paper, because the pillow will kind of go like this when you fill it. So don't try and put it too, too close to these edges just because, you know, then you won't see as much of the, the icon when it kind of goes like that, you know, when it gets fluffed up. So if you fluff it up this way, then it's, you know, still mostly visible. And also make sure you put seam allowance. Seam allowance is basically adding just about a uh, half an inch to the side of everything you're cutting, mainly because when you then sew down into it and you flip it, then all of those edges that you sewed will go away into the pillow. So that's what a seam allowance is an allowance of measurement for your seams. Sewing tip. Mm -hmm. 
So now I have two of these, one for each side of the pillow. And then what we're gonna do now is before we do any sewing, we still need to cut out the Pantheon logo. So I'm gonna fold this, set it to the side, and also whatever leftovers you have cut off from that, this is also very nice to put inside. So even save the scraps from this project, that will go all into the pillow. So next we will cut out the fabric for the logo. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically cut out the parts that are the solid red. So then I can then go with a marker onto this fabric and cut it out. I'm gonna be using a Zacto knife or blade, um, but you can always just use scissors if you want. So I know I said that this design was simple, but I simplified it even more. Um, this is just gonna hang out here. Um, but there was a red line right under there, as you can see, and it would have just been very, very difficult to cut that small of a strip out of the fabric and sew it down. So I just basically extended the lines that were here up into that area. And also, these were all kind of their own separate little squares, so I also connected it all into one piece, just so that there is less individual tiny pieces that I have to sew, and rather just one piece that I can just, you know, sew down. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this little stencil that I made, I'm gonna put it onto the red fabric here, and I'm going to make sure to put it on the wrong side of the fabric, the side of the fabric that I don't wanna be showing, um, because I am gonna be stenciling it with some marker. Um, and then I'm gonna be cutting right on the lines. No seam allowances here because I will be, basically if I had, oops, let me just cut this little piece so I can show you an example. So if this was the piece I was doing, then I'd just be cut, I would just be sewing right along this edge here and not cutting any extra because you only wanna cut seam allowance if you're gonna be folding something over and sewing there. But with all of these lines, we're not gonna be folding anything over. I'm just gonna be taking the piece and sewing along the edges. So that's what I'm gonna do on this fabric right here. Let's go. So now that I have this all cut out, I also had to, you know, get all the little fuzzies off because there are a lot of fuzzies when you <laughs> cut fabric like this. So I had to get those off so then it won't jam up my sewing machine or anything like that or get in my way if I wanna hand sew it. But not all fabric's gonna do that, it's just this fabric that I am particularly using. And so now that I have that, I chose one of the panels of my sides of my pillow, you know? So this one. And I'm going to put this little design here onto this and I'm gonna pin it down on the side that I want it to be. And then I'm gonna sew it. So you can choose to hand sew it with a, just a needle and thread if you want. Or if you want to go a little bit faster, you can use a sewing machine. It will still take a little while on the sewing machine because this is very detailed and like tiny little lines, very particular, you know, angles and stuff. But it will go a little faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this down here so then I can get to sewing. Also one thing I did mean to mention is when you are using whatever Pantheon you wanna use, if it's not identical on both sides, then you're gonna to wanna to flip it and trace it. So then it, you know, when you flip it back to the right side to sew it on, then it'll be the right direction. But I think a lot of the Pantheons and a lot of the icons we have are, um, you know, what is that word, parallel? Not parallel, you know, the same on both sides if you cut it down the middle. So. Thankfully, this was, and now I'm placing it, and when you're placing it down, try to center it as best as possible onto the piece because you're gonna be sewing it down in the middle, hopefully. So, you know, just take your time to really figure out where the center is before you sew everything down. So here we have it all pinned down. Um, obviously there's some little bits that I haven't, but the majority of it is pinned down. And now we'll go into sewing it. If you're gonna be using your sewing machine, then I would recommend using a basting stitch. And a basting stitch is basically when you go in with the needle and thread by hand, very loosely, um, just to keep things in place because as you take out the pins, then stuff can shift around a little bit, but with a basting stitch in, then it won't move around. 
And um, the basting stitch is basically something that is meant to be taken out later once you get the more secure stitching down with the sewing machine. But if you're just doing the whole thing by hand, then I think you're going to be fine with just keeping the pins in. Now I'm going to go through with a basting stitch, which is just a very loose stitch that I can then basically just pull right out if I once I'm done with it. And I've done it right here on this little one here, so you can see the little ends here that I'll be pulling out once you know I'm done sewing around. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of them and then use my sewing machine to really hold it all down. Alrighty, oh, scoot this to the side. And now that that part is done, I went ahead and I went with the scissors and I cut a lot of the fuzzies off that were kind of hanging off the edge. But now I have to go in and I have to get all the fuzzies off of here. And I have this like little reusable um, lint roller, I suppose. So it doesn't really roll, but it does the job very well. And here it is. Ta-da! So, obviously this fabric is not ideal, but I do like how it's kind of risen above it. So, I mean, ideally you would have used some more of this kind of fabric, but we gotta use what we got, you know, on hand. So, now we can actually create the pillow. So this is right side, and then you choose whichever side. These are pretty much the same, I think. Yeah, right sides together. Get some more of this little fuzzies off here. Right sides together. And then you're gonna pin these edges here real quick. And this one, when you sew it, if you're gonna sew it on your sewing machine, I, you don't really need basting stitch on this, um, mainly because it is just a straight line, so, and it's not like super detail work, so stuff shouldn't be moving around too much. So, you know, I don't think it'll be a big deal. All right. So what you're gonna wanna do when you're sewing this, either if you're hand sewing it or you're sewing it with your sewing machine, you're gonna wanna sew almost all the way around, but you're gonna wanna leave a little bit of a gap that you don't sew. That way there's space there for you to flip the pillow inside out or right side out actually, and then stuff the pillow and then you're gonna hand sew it closed. So, that's what we're gonna do. Hopefully I have the ratio right in terms of the side so it kind of stays in the center. But if it's not perfect, then it is what it is. It's, it'll still be comfy and it'll still be a cute thing that you made. So that's, that's the best part about it is that you made it. So I'll go ahead and sew this up. All right, so now that I have done all the edges here, I can flip it inside out. Let me also cut these little excess threads here. There we are, it is looking pretty cute. I think I did a pretty good job at centering it. But now that it is a little pillowcase, we can go ahead and stuff the pillow. So I have all my fabric scraps here. This is a box that I put all my fabric scraps. I'm gonna pull out some of the softer fabrics that I have and I'm gonna cut them up into small pieces and put it inside this. I basically just put it all together like this and I take my fabric scissors and I just go to town cutting it. And then once I have a pile of it, I put it into the pillow. So I'll be doing this for a little bit. See on the flip side. <laughs> So I ended up filling this up a little bit more than halfway with a, not even a little bit of a dent really into all of this. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill the rest of it with polyfill and this can go back into the scrap bucket. <laughs> all right. And then also since some of the fabric was like purple, it got a little bit of purple there, but it's fine. I'm just gonna get little chunks of it and kind of mix it in with the, 
the scrap fabric pieces just so uh, you know it has a good mixture here and it's not just a bunch of scrap fabric hanging out at the bottom or the top or you know. So now all that's left to do is to close the hole and we're going to be using a stitch called a ladder stitch with this and you're going to need to get your needle again. This is too long. And then you're going to want to put it with the same color fabric as this. So mine's going to be using the white thread. And I will show you what a ladder stitch is because it will then disappear and you will not be able to see it anymore. When you have this hole here, when you kind of tug on it, it the fabric naturally kind of closes on its own and does the, the same fold that is over there. So you're going to want to get your needle and you're going to want to go on the inside of here to start with. And you're going to kind of want to naturally put it where it wants to fold. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do like a ladder and come across to the other side. and then go in and out on that side, then come to the other side, do the same thing. Oh, this is difficult to do like this. <laughs> You're not gonna wanna put too much space between them, so. There's that. And then as you tighten it, it pulls it together like that. So I'll go ahead and do a ladder stitch here. I'll do it loosely so then I can tug on it so you guys can see as it disappears. And then once it's all done, you're just going to want to tie a little knot by putting it back in. And you're going to put your thread through the hole and just do that a couple of times right there. To create a good knot. There we go. And I think it looks pretty dang cute. It's soft and I would definitely sleep on it. So I would say this is a success and I really hope that you guys try it at home and it's a success for you guys. Even if you guys don't do a little, you know, icon on it and you just wanna make a little pillow, just give your sewing skills a good shot, then I'd love to see it. Make sure to tweet it at me or you just have some ideas for your next, you know, craft quest, that would be great. Preferably things I can do at home because I think that the next one might be at my house too. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys on the next one.